On October 15, 2018, Jamie Kloss's parents were found fatally shot in her barren Wisconsin home before her killer bound her with duct tape and placed her in the trunk of his vehicle and drove off. She was held captive for nearly three months in a remote cabin about 70 miles north of her home with her abductor, 21-year-old Jake Thomas Patterson. On January 10, 2019, after her captor told her he was leaving the cabin for five or six hours, Jamie escaped and summoned the help of a woman who was walking her dog. The woman then took Jamie to a neighbor's house and the neighbors dialed 911. Hi, I have a young lady at my house right now, and she says her name is Jamie Kloss, the neighbor told the dispatcher. Soon after, Jamie was rescued and Patterson was arrested. The Cleveland Kidnapping Survivors Between August 2002 and April 2004, three young women, Amanda Burry, then 17, Michelle Knight, who has since changed her name to Lily Rose Lee, then 21, and Gina DeJesus, then 14, went missing in Cleveland. They were kidnapped by Ariel Castro, who kept them captive in his Cleveland house for nearly 10 years. All three women were raped and abused throughout their captivity, which lasted nearly a decade. Amanda Berry gave birth to a daughter, and Lee said she was impregnated five times but miscarriage each one after being beaten by Castro. In 2013, Amanda Berry escaped after getting a neighbor's attention and called the police, who came to the house and found Lee and Jesus. Castro was later sentenced to a thousand years in prison and committed suicide with in the first month by hanging himself in his prison cell. Today, all three are reunited with their families. Lee wrote a book and is publishing another next year. Amanda Berry advocates for finding missing people and hosts a daily news segment on Cleveland's Fox 8. I hope we get the faces of missing people out there and get people looking at them a second time, a third time, and looking at their name, Berry told People Magazine. It's kind of the small things that make a big difference. Colleen Stan, the girl in a box. In 1977, 20 year old Colleen was traveling from her home in Eugene, Oregon to Northern California to attend a birthday party. Her mode of transport was hitchhiking and she turned down two rides before getting in the car with 23 year old Cameron Hooker, his wife Janice, and their baby. Within hours, Hooker put a knife to her throat and threatened to kill her. He bound her, gagged her, and placed a homemade wooden box over her head. Stan was locked in a coffin-like box for 23 hours a day underneath the couple's bed for seven years. She was removed from the box only to be repeatedly raped and tortured. Colleen Stan was told that a group called the company would kill her if she escaped and she was made to sign a slave contract. It was the fear of the company that kept her from seeking help, even when Hooker allowed her to visit her family at one point during her captivity. In 1983, Colleen was allowed to leave the house, getting a job as a motel maid, and eventually calling Hooker to tell him she was leaving and going home. He was sentenced to 104 years in prison, where he remains today. Colleen recently spoke out about her time in captivity, saying she has lived a happy life since. Your life is just kind of in limbo when you're in captivity, and once you get that freedom back and you have that choice again, it's like the gates open, she said, and you just run for it. Two days before Katie Beers' 10th birthday, she was kidnapped from a Long Island, New York arcade by John Esposito, a family friend. John Esposito held Katie in a tiny underground bunker for 16 days. After John, who had a friendly relationship with Beers prior to the kidnapping, was questioned, he eventually confessed and led police to the bunker. In 2013, more than 20 years later, Beer publicly addressed the kidnapping for the first time in a memoir, Buried Memories. She said she had been abused in her past by her godmother and her godmother's husband, who kept the children from school and treated her as their servant, and they lived in a squaddle hovel of a home. 
After she was found, she was placed with the foster family. Beard now says she owes them my life. Of her ordeal, she says, you never fully recover. It's with me every day, but it's something I've learned to cope with. While 14-year-old Elizabeth Smart was in bed at her Salt Lake City home on June 4, 2002, Brian David Mitchell broke in and abducted her. She would be held in captivity for nine months and raped repeatedly. Elizabeth shared the room with her sister, Mary Catherine Smart, who witnessed the abduction and pretended to be asleep, but woke her parents up later when she felt it was safe to do so. In October of that same year, Mary Catherine, who thought the voice of her sister's abductor sounded familiar, realized where she had heard it at before. It was the voice of Mitchell, who called himself Emmanuel, and had been hired by the Smarts to help out around their house. Mitchell and Elizabeth Smart were eventually found in Sandy, Utah. Mitchell was convicted of kidnapping charges and sentenced to life in prison in 2010. His wife, Wanda Barzi, was sentenced to 15 years in prison for her role in the kidnapping. In the years since the ordeal, Elizabeth, now 29 years old, has reclaimed her life as an inspirational speaker author, and advocate. She is the mother of two children.